Hey everybody, Zach from Now You Know. You might be wondering why I'm holding some spinach. Come with me, you'll find out why. Next, on Now You Know. All right, so we're heading off to a farm this morning. But this isn't just any regular farm. This farm has no dirt. This is the farm I was talking about. Come on. I'm Lydia Conley and welcome to Fresh Box Farm. So we like to start out towards um, looking at version one of our growth format and then kind of moving along and seeing how we evolved. This huge building right here is what we call our mod. And so all future farms will be in this modular format. We started out growing in shipping containers, I think like a lot of other people do. This is version two. Um, we improved a couple of things before we went to the big format. The shipping containers were great because we could kind of adjust little set points, do our own experiments, and see what's optimal for each crop. Okay. So once we figured it out on the small scale, we felt comfortable to go up to the large scale. Gotcha. We are kosher certified, one of the very few kosher certified leafy green growers. And you were saying this used to be a ginger ale uh, bottling plant. Right. I believe in the late 1800s, and so we use RO purified water. So when we installed our second system on this other side, we had to actually dig into the floor, and when we opened it up, um, the pipes actually still smelled like ginger ale. Now you said RO, so that means reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. And for our viewers who may not be familiar with that, that basically means um, you're putting, you're filtering the water through a reverse osmosis. Um, so that's like the best filter. Like yeah. Nothing makes it through but the water, basically. Yeah, pretty much all you get out are H's and O's. Right. Okay. So um, when we first started, we used municipal water just from the tap, and that was fine but we are all about control and precision. Funny story, when I started my aquaponic system at home, we, you know, you need fish to make it work. The first few batches of fish would die. And I was like, you know, I'm such a horrible person. And then we used RO water uh -huh. and they all lived. And it was like, it was just the tap water that was killing them. And oh, I was like, wow. And I was like, that's not a good sign. Do you drink that tap water not yourself? Anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> yeah, the RO system, it really has helped us um, make a lot of strides. We're gonna open one up. We're going inside. So we're completely soilless, which I think is kind of um, odd for people to comprehend. See, I told you there's no dirt in here. This is a farm with no dirt. <laughs> so we use all LEDs, and that's really what made this industry possible, is the LED technology kind of coming along and making it affordable. We will try anything, and the plants kind of tell us what they like. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And how many plants are in here roughly right now? About 3,000. 3,000? Mm -hmm. wow. Question, sun goes down at night. Do plants like to sleep? Plants do need to sleep a little bit. We could keep the lights on 24 hours a day and that might make them grow really fast, but we've seen with too much light, you can have aberrations. Do you have any idea how much space that would take up if we were to grow this in a traditional farm? We get about 400 times what you could get with one acre outside. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you have any idea that there's that many plants in there? That's shocking. And that's 1.0. That's 1.0. I'm pretty excited to see 2.0. So this is a 2.0. 2.0. So the big difference here is just that we have one reservoir for each side and the water all comes back to this tank. So oh. that our computers can monitor the nutrients for us. Nice. Oh, that's interesting. So it can keep track of all of it for you. Yeah. Obviously, it looks like the, the Swiss chard's been harvested, and that'll come back, right? Because I see little little stalks left, little leaves left. Yeah. Um, and basically, that's going to keep keep growing. Now, are you seeing any improved yields with the 2.0 system over the 1.0 system? The 2.0 system slightly improved yields, but I'll show you the 3.0. Oh, and there's that's a 3.0. Yeah, that's okay. the big one. Now, when you were going to school, because you went to school for environmental science, is that correct? Yeah, I majored in biology, concentration in environmental science. Was this on your radar at all when you were in school? Not at all. So I graduated in 2009. After school, I worked in a greenhouse, and so that was quite a different experience. With the growing population in the world, with the water shortages, I think this is a really good way 
How much water do you use compared to a standard farm? We use about 99% less than outside. 99% less water? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Because you control it all in here. We control it all. There's no absorption into soil. It stays right where you put it. Um, the only water lost is through condensation and transpiration by the plant. So when I buy a uh, lettuce from, say, California. What was its route to get to me here on the East Coast? It's been on the back of a truck for about two weeks before it actually gets to your grocery store and you're able to purchase it. Wow, and so that's why my lettuce goes bad. Like, I'll buy lettuce and literally the next day it's just wilted and starting to go bad. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, how could that be? This is fresh lettuce. Yeah. But it's not fresh. It's not. You guys harvest this, and how long does it take to get from cutting it to into the store, generally? 24 hours. So they were harvesting some this morning. They're packing it right now. It will go out to our distributor tonight and be on store shelves tomorrow morning. Can you believe they create one to three tons of produce a day here? All right, I figure our listeners, our viewers, are probably gonna be like, okay, Zach, that's fine, but it really comes down to taste, and I brought some, some stuff from the local grocery store. You've got some stuff you just picked. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for a taste test. I think so. All right, all right, so this is your Freshbox 50-50 blend. It's got uh, spinach, and it's got um, romaine, which is what I brought today. Mm -hmm. So let's see, I'm gonna start with what I brought today. That is a baby spinach, and this is triple washed. All right, tastes like spinach. And I'm gonna go for your spinach. And what's funny is just automatically, this is so much baby-isher, mm -hmm. is that a word? Like it's softer, but tender. it's but tender, but it's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we grow big spinach here. That's not the same at all. <laughs> I love spinach. And this, I don't know, now this tastes very flat. Like it just tastes like, like, spinach and then this tastes like like you can really taste the spinach mm -hmm. it tastes alive honestly i thought it was gonna be like oh, they're both spinach <laughs> this like also when you get the stem of a spinach they normally don't want to just mm, like it's not soft enough this is just tender i could down the whole thing all right <laughs> let's go to romaine all right so here's let's get a good leaf and the other thing is you guys know this like here's a bag it doesn't smell that good. And I just got it. I just got it an hour ago. And it's already, like, and I picked the best bag. And it's already kind of wilting. There's a romaine. And it's already kind of not, I'm trying to weigh out. Romaines, there's one right there. Um, it's red. This, this guy. Mm -hmm. All right, automatically, it's, um, it's softer. I think you normally eat romaine just because of the texture. Mm -hmm. You just want the crunch. And this has flavor. I don't even think I knew romaine had a flavor. <laughs> yeah, you don't think of lettuce as being flavorful, but ours, because the plants get all of the nutrients that they need, because it's fresh, picked this morning, the flavor remains in the leaves. Oh my God. I love eating salads, but like faced with something like this, I would need to put a lot of like, balsamic and oil on it like you know what I mean to get it down it's not like something you're looking forward to this you don't need to put anything on it you just want to eat it no dressing necessary wow this is organically grown I, you know I brought organic spinach but I think the fact that a it had to have been picked like I don't know where it's grown but I'm pretty sure it's not close by. maybe California probably California um, the fact that it had to be picked a while ago it had to be triple washed. Mm -hmm. And the more I'm thinking about the triple wash part, like probably not pure water that it was washed in. And so, and then thrown in a bag where there's just no way to, you know, that's just in a bag, like that's gonna sit on a truck and mm -hmm. that's not good for the nutrients leaching out or whatever. So, I mean, the, as hard as they tried, um, they had to do a bunch of things that you guys don't have to do. You can pick it exactly when you wanna pick it. It's gonna be in the store the next day. Mm -hmm. like, you don't have to um, do anything to it. Yeah, so many Americans especially grow up with just pouring ranch or something on mm -hmm. a salad to get it down. 
Yeah. And it's like, that should not be the case. When a salad's done right, like when you go to a restaurant where they get good ingredients, you're like, oh my gosh, your eyes are open. Mm -hmm. These are the ingredients. Now talk to me about, so you've got this in stores, especially around here. I noticed it was in a bunch of the bigger stores around here. Mm -hmm. How about restaurants? Can, can restaurants get your stuff yet? Yeah, so we sell to a couple of local restaurants here in Millis. Um, we also work with some caterers. Now, if I'm a restaurant not in Millis, mm -hmm. um, are you open to that yet? Are you big enough yet? We are, so we'll deliver within a day's travel. We don't want to go too far because we know that that will impact the freshness. You can wow. A day from here. I'm talking to you, Spice. I'm talking to you, all those restaurants in Boston and other places. Like, you need to contact Freshbox because this is going to make your customers light up. Like, they're going to love this. You have a disruptive technology. You are disrupting agriculture, right? I mean, this is the right way to grow. Elon said that we're gonna be on Mars. He says, this is Elon time in 2024 with humans there in 2027. He's usually wrong by, a, sorry Elon, but you're usually wrong by a year or two. So let's just say 2030. Would you consider going to Mars as part of, no, you're, you're like, I'm staying put on Earth. <laughs> oh, myself, I don't know if I'd go to Mars, okay. but be happy to send uh, some of our researchers. <laughs> <laughs> You can't send people to Mars without a food source. And so one of the first things we're gonna to have to do on Mars is figure out how to get plants to grow there. And right. being able to send a containerized, you know, fully supportive thing is the way to go. And basically, from what I've seen, you could do that now. Thank you for joining us on that tour of Fresh Box Farms. Wasn't that cool? I'm gonna take this home right now and make a salad. See ya. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you wanna see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again, we'll see you soon.